Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and welcome to part 3 and the final chapter of the detail on this brand new 2020 Ford Mustang. So in this video, I'm going to wrap up this series by primarily focusing in on ceramic coating the paint. But just before we get to that, I'm going to go through how I clean and dress a new car engine bay, which incidentally wasn't something the customer opted for, so it was just a complimentary service I decided to do. Now being that it's a new car, there's absolutely no benefit in using more aggressive cleaners or processes to prepare it for a dressing or protectant. So my method is just to use compressed air and a gentle brush if need be to remove any minor dust or dirt which is then followed by removing any marks or grind with my IPA cleaner and a microfiber cloth and again using a gentle brush to access any intricate surfaces. And if it's a new or relatively new car this should really work quite well to give you a nice clean engine bay surface that will promote a good lasting bond with whatever dressing, sealant or coating you decide to use. Now in many cases, when a client chooses an engine bay detail, I do tend to actually use a ceramic coating to seal and protect the finish. But for this complementary detail, I'll just be using CarPro Pearl, which I actually really love for engine bays. I'll tend to use a foam or microfiber applicator, give it a nice initial prime and then divide the engine bay into about 6 to 8 areas and basically just massage it into each area, making sure I get a nice, even and uniform application. And you'll also find that CarPro Pearl works great on most materials, including plastics, rubbers, metal and even painted surfaces around the engine bay.
After allowing it to sit for a good hour or so, I'll then come back with a clean microfiber cloth to take care of any high spots, but also knock down the shine so I get a more matte to satin finish, which also helps Pearl from accumulating dust and dirt down the track. And if you give it the time to set and then wipe it down with a cloth, you should find that it no longer feels sticky or greasy and no longer looks glossy like some of the dressings, but still gives the trims a nice, rich, saturated finish, which is what I really like about it. So on to ceramic coating the paint and trims. Now it was actually my intent to also give this car a complementary wheels and glass coating so that I could show that process in this video. But things don't always go according to plan and the truth is that the paint correction stage you saw in the last video ended up taking me more than twice as long as I intended. So I just simply ran out of time to show you guys this process on video. But as many of you may know, I have shown both glass and rim coatings countless times in my past detailing vlogs. The ceramic coating I'll be using is Nova Pro, which is a certified professional coating, but its application method can translate to almost any other coating. And I'll also try to add as much useful information as possible about applying ceramic coatings in general. I'll start by adding a bead of the product to my applicator, and I do this before each and every single section. I'll be working in a general top to bottom pattern around the car, starting with the roof. I'll dab the coating into an approximately half meter square section so that it's evenly distributed. And then I'm going to use three to four horizontal and vertical overlapping lines in total to coat the section consistently. Your first coating section is where you need to determine how long the coating needs to flash, which is another way of saying how long it needs to sit and bond to the paint before you can come back and wipe or level it down. If you're new to ceramic coatings, I would highly recommend using a coating that instantly flashes and bonds to the paint, such as Sequoz UK or Nova Evo, as it takes all the guesswork out of it, and you can simply apply it with your applicator nice and thoroughly, and then immediately wipe it down. But with most other coatings, including Nova Pro, you'll need to look at it and wait till you see it start to dissipate and streak on the panel, and then you'll have to assess how it feels while you're wiping it down. If the coating starts to smear and just feels greasy while you're wiping it, that's a clear sign that you haven't waited long enough and that the coating hasn't yet effectively bonded to the surface. But if the coating feels overly grippy and difficult to wipe down, then that's a sign you've waited too long before leveling it down. The coating should wipe down cleanly without smearing too much, and it also shouldn't be too sticky so that you need to use force to remove the excess, all of which is a good sign that your wipe down time is correct. Now in my particular case, where the weather was a little colder, I found that I needed about three to four minutes of flash time before wiping down Nova Pro, which is actually a more rapid flashing coating in more average weather conditions. So I found that if I applied the coating to two sections at a time and then came back and wiped down one section after the other, it was a really good time frame and method to apply it in my specific environment. And that's what you need to understand, that your flash and wipe off times can vary dramatically depending on your environment and technique. So let's just say the weather was extremely cold then I probably would have had to wait more like 5 to 10 minutes, and if the weather was extremely hot, I may have had to immediately wipe it down. But just say I wanted to speed up the flash time, I could actually do that by simply doing more vertical and horizontal overlapping lines, which will encourage the coating to flash more rapidly. And just say I wanted to slow my flash time down in a hotter environment, I could actually work smaller sections and just stick to 2 or 3 overlapping passes to slow it down. So I'm just trying to explain that you have to adapt to your environment and that you can certainly influence how that coating is applied to your advantage. And although I'd love to say that you have to wait this amount of time for each coating before wiping it down, every coating, environment and method is different. So it's really up to you to discover your flash time and your technique, which is different for every single person and car.
Next, I want to cover a few more points and tips about ceramic coatings, starting with sections, cloths, and your wipe off. You should always be using two cloths at a time, and you'll also find that lower pile or lower GSM cloths tend to work a little better. Your first cloth is used to gather the majority of the excess coating, and you should only wipe within your section with your first cloth to avoid pushing the coating beyond your section and creating high spots. Your second cloth is for buffing the section streak free, and you should wipe well beyond your section with this second cloth to help blend the coating in and avoid any patchy finishes, as well as address any potential high spots or streaks. And as a whole, I'll tend to use about six microfiber cloths in total to coat an average car, flipping the cloths over to a clean section after every few sections and switching to clean cloths after every few panels. Secondly, you should switch to a fresh micro suede applicator every half hour or so, as the cloths will begin to stiffen and harden up and potentially scratch your car. So in total, I'd say that I tend to use about four micro suede cloths in total to do a car. And another tip I can offer is to coat your rubber trims and seals just before you switch to a fresh applicator suede cloth as the rubber trims will tend to stain your applicator. So it's a good idea to do your rubber trims and then switch to a fresh cloth to continue on your paintwork. So then that leads to the fact that you can and also should coat your rubber, plastic and even metal trims. But just keep in mind that in my experience, Coatings or really any form of paint protection just doesn't seem to last quite as long on those trims as it does on the rest of the paint. So you will need to reapply a coating or really any paint protection product on these trims a little more frequently. Beyond that, it's also okay to remove the suede cloth from the applicator block to access more intricate areas and I've even shown you guys in the past that you can also apply the coating to a small soft brush and use it to coat certain intricate trims and if those trims have a textured finish sometimes the coating can actually self level on them so you don't even need to wipe it down as you would have to on paint and glossy finishes. Thirdly lighting for applying a coating is also extremely important. Now if you're working outdoors, an overcast day is actually perfect for applying a coating as it helps show high spots or streaks in the finish that you may otherwise miss because they're just so difficult to see in harsh or direct sunlight. But when working indoors, what you want to try and do is avoid harsh direct lights as it also makes it difficult to see the coating or any potential high spots. So having your lights aimed at the walls and just bouncing the light onto the car is actually much better. And you could even use something like baking paper to diffuse your lights and create that soft, indirect light that's really ideal for applying ceramic coatings.
As I mentioned earlier, it's sometimes hard to balance detailing a vehicle with making these videos. But I want to thank Harry, the owner of this beautiful Mustang, for being very understanding and giving me the extra time to both detail and film this process. So as I wrap up this series, I'll just break down the process and hours spent on actually detailing with filming aside. So stage one, which was the initial inspection, wash, decontamination and drying, was approximately four hours work. Stage two, which included the IPA wipe down, paint inspection and measurement, masking and paint correction, was approximately 25 hours. And stage three, which included the engine bay detail, the pre-coating IPA wipe down and the coating application itself, was approximately four hours. So in total, from start to finish, it was about 33 hours all up. Now, what I usually budget for a new car detail is about 20 hours or so, depending on what the client is after. But it was just that extra time needed during the paint correction stage on this car that really blew out this job. I'll let you guys decide what you think about the finished result with the final shots of the car. But on a more personal note, I was extremely happy, as was the owner, who was very appreciative of all the hard work that went into it. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon. Careful way.